Looks like me is starting to look like we casa. <laughs> like waking up next to you. I'm making you coffee. Your sheets is nicer than mine. Bamboo, baby. <laughs> So we've covered beneficiaries. We can hook you up with a special savings account today. Thanks, love, getting calls. Always like, hello? <laughs> they do be like that. What's he doing here? Now, I don't usually fight my brothers, but I will if necessary. I work hard for this so many late nights. I live in large as it's still the late nights. But now it's date night, so rip a stage mic. I'm a rich bitch. Hey. I'm a rich bitch. Hey. I got hella coins on my wristlet. Yo, bar is weak, but the bank account busting. That's right. What's going on fam? It's your man VKJ and yes, we are back with another video for Insecure. This is the recap for episode 8 and it's called Choices, okay? So, if you're new and you're loving Insecure, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, absolutely like, comment below and hit that notification bell so every time I upload a new one, you're definitely getting it first. Now, if you missed anything, definitely go back and check out all my recaps for Insecure. And yes, this is the last season, so make sure you get all caught up on everything. So let's break down and recap episode eight of Insecure. Now, we find Nathan and your girl Issa, they definitely waking up to each other in the morning. Absolutely, they're loving each other now more so than ever. You know, definitely Nathan is coming through and being honest about his feelings. And she's just like, hey, it looks like, you know, Mikasa's becoming we Casa, right? So he's talking about how she has his shirt on and everything else like that, how he has his clothes there. And he's like, hey, you know, maybe we should think about moving in together. You know, your sheets are better than mine, right? <laughs> well, she's like, well, you know, that's something definitely to think about. And she's like, well, let's let's think about it, right? You know, she wants to be sure before she moves too fast, right? So she puts her toothbrush in her mouth, and he's like, hey, that's uh, that's me toothbrush. <laughs> so she throws up <laughs> in the sink. She doesn't throw it up, but she spits out because that's his toothbrush. Now we are at a block event. You know, Issa's having an event now. She put an event together with all these different vendors, and it's looking good. She's out there with Seth from MBW, and he's very impressed by everything that's going on. He's definitely glad that, you know, these guys wanted to collaborate with her and Everything's coming together looking real good. He's letting her know that definitely him and Nadia is going to send her an offer very, very soon. But he's definitely impressed by what's going on. She's excited about it, of course, because, you know, all of her dreams and aspirations are seeming to come through right now. It's coming true. And she's excited about that. Definitely. Then, of course, we see a young lady. We saw her and I believe the second episode, she rose up and she's like, thank you so much for putting this together. And, you know, she's kind of, you know, different. She's like, I'm glad I stopped by before I headed to that bridge. And she was like, OK, you know, making it real awkward for Issa. So Issa rolls up on Nathan and his cousin. And it looks like him and his cousin are getting along. And, you know, his cousin is definitely happy that he got the invite from Issa. And, yeah, you know, they're taking pictures and it's looking real good. You know, it's looking like Nathan and his cousin definitely reconciled, but she's definitely enjoying herself. Uh, enjoying Nathan and definitely bigging him up. You know, she's really loving on Nathan. You know, she's calling him, yeah, we're a power couple, and she's really happy with Nate. So, you know, Nate definitely coming around, definitely showing that he loves her and that they love each other, and absolutely things are looking great. And it's looking so well that, of course, her girls and her brother roll up on her, talking about, ah, we see you, we see you, you know? Uh, so definitely, uh, here comes Kells with her joke. She's like, yeah, they did a picture of me, da 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 And her brother just makes a, a bad joke. He's like, oh, that's supposed to be a caricature. It looks like it's spot on. And she's like, I wish I wrote a, a, wrote a movie so I can kill him off. <laughs> so, you know, so it's all good. And they're just talking about things. And and uh, looks like Molly is talking to Torian, you know, messaging him back and forth. And, you know, they're trying to take it slow. And and she definitely just wants to make the right move. She doesn't want to move too fast with Torian, but it looks like everything's going well. And they're supposed to go out on a second date. So things are going good on that end. So now Issa and her assistant, they're rolling back to her car. And guess who rolls up? Your boy Crenshaw is rolling up trying to talk to Issa. Of course, the assistant's like, listen, I got, I got something. I'm packing right now, so don't even try it. So he's like, listen, you know, I apologize everything I did before, you know, I tried to do an event. I didn't realize how crazy it was. 
but definitely we need to collaborate. And, you know, he wants to collaborate with Issa, with the block, because he sees what's going on and how she's doing things for the community. And she's like, really, at this point, like you trashed my whole company, but now you want to collaborate with me? So he's like, listen, you know, we could do a lot of big things. Just think about it and all this and that. So, of course, this sister's like, yeah, they keep coming back. And the sister's making, jo making jokes like, she's like, yeah, with his sorry, sexy uh, apology. <laughs> right. So here's Issa. She gets the offer letter from MBW from Nadia. And she's excited about it. And she reads through it. And bam, she scrolls down to how much. She doesn't say how much, but yes, yeah, obviously a lot of money. you right probably six figures maybe five six figures and she's excited of course talking to herself rapping to herself in the mirror <laughs> she said the bars are weak but the bank account is busting as you saw in the trailer right so now uh they're at a theater and this is the next place where they're going to do an event for the uh one of the vendors and of course you got seth and nadia they're there and they're super excited about what's going on because yeah, Issa is making, you know, the block is making real good progress. So now we shoot over, go into the theater, but now we see Seth, Issa, and her assistant with a couple of other folks. Looks like she has a crew now and they're going into a bigger venue, right? Again, it's like, oh, what's going on? Yeah, it looks like Issa's moving on up and she's doing bigger things and she has assistants, more assistants helping her out with her events. Now we shoot over. And now she's being interviewed by a young lady. And it looks like she's in Motor City, Detroit. What up to the D? And she's being interviewed and it, things are going well. And she's like, hey, you know, now, now in Detroit and everything's expanding. The crowd is loving her. You know, they're cheering her on. And, you know, they're like, yeah, you want to give a shout out? You know, anything coming up in L.A.? And she's like, I haven't been to L.A. in a long time. So it's obvious that she's moving around, you know, like the block is blowing up all over and she's like ooh child and of course the crowd is like things are gonna get easy uh right she she learned that from a couple of episodes back how to do that so yeah things are going well and picking up Issa is now in first class she got her shades on they take a coat for her and a whole nine and she turns to her left and she sees your boy Ty Dolla Sign he's like what's going on she's like oh man this is great you know, we're in first class together. You see how we moving up? He's like, yeah, this is this is what it's all about. You know, I love seeing our folks moving on up, right? So she's like, yeah, you know, we flying back to L.A., you know, and all this and that. And Todd Dollar Sign is like, yeah, you know, I'm flying back because I'm supposed to be collaborating with, uh, you know, a, a hero out there called Crenshaw. She's like, oh, really? You you down with Crenshaw, huh? You doing an event with Crenshaw? He's like, yeah, he's supposed to be like a local hero. And everything else like that. So she's like, oh, okay, that's good. That's good for him. That's good for y'all. And she sits back in her first class seat and all this and that, right? So now we shoot over and we see that she's back in LA and they had a new place. And Nate is there, of course, to welcome her, takes her bags in. Looks like she's moving on up. Now she got a house, real like nice looking house. Of course, he's happy to see her. You know, they're definitely, you know, showing each other love. And she's like, why did we move here? And he's like, yeah, you wanted to move closer to MBW offices. He's like, so he's like, yeah, let me go chill some wine. You go get comfortable because we're going to have a good time, right? Boom. And then we wake up. <laughs> that was all in her mind. <laughs> None of that was happening, but it was all in her imagination. And she was like, yeah, I like that, right? It, it looks good, right? So she sees in, in her mind that things are looking good and things are going to move up. But then she gets a message from Crenshaw talking about he wants to meet up. And wants to meet at a location. Now we shoot over to Molly. And Molly and Kelly is at uh, Molly's parents' house. You know, they're trying to get things together, get the estate together. You know, with that scare with, you know, mom, her mom, you know, having that stroke. You know, that definitely is moving them to push them to get their will done and everything. Now, of course, a brother, a younger brother is like, uh, anybody want some tea? I'm going to get some tea. Like, he's really uncomfortable talking about. You know, what's going to happen when the parents go away? You know, when, when the parents pass away. So they're having a discussion. And, you know, the, the younger brother is really like, I'm going to go get some tea right now. You know, it's getting real uncomfortable. They're talking about assets. It's like, OK, what is the 401k looking like? He's like, well, I had to use some of it to, you know, definitely take care of your mother's uh, medical expenses. But it's not looking too well. And of course, Kelly's just trying to comfort them and let them know, hey, listen, it's best to do this now when you see everything on paper. 
it just, you know, eases your mind to know that everything is allocated properly and that whoever's going to get whatever they're going to get, it's going to be all on paper. But, you know, the dad, her dad feels like, you know, he's been working for 50 years, doesn't really have anything to, you know, share to give to the kids. And uh, again, the brother's like, uh, we don't have any tea. I'm going to go get some tea. Of course, he's very uncomfortable. It's a very uncomfortable discussion to have, but it is a discussion that has to happen, especially when you have children and everything. So, you know, a dad, again, is explaining that it's really not a good conversation that he wants to have. Kells tries to lighten it up and says, yeah, we can call up an account, get an account for you and call up the bank. And they'd be like, hello. And of course, the mom's laughing it's like, yeah, they do talk like that. Right. So they're going back and forth, just trying to lighten it up. But Molly's dad's feeling real bad because he feels like he doesn't have anything to leave them. But Molly's trying to reassure him like, hey, you know, you're leaving us love and and everything that you taught us. So don't worry about it. We're going to work it out. We're going to work it out. And of course, he definitely is. You know, just feeling bad about it, but Molly's trying to make him feel better. Now, we shoot over to, you know, a coffee shop and we see Crenshaw and we see Issa. And, you know, he's definitely like, so did you think about my offer? And she's like, yo, I just want to tell you in person that I don't think it's going to work out. I don't think this is going to be good, good for business for both of us. But he's telling her how, you know, he's been changing a lot of things up. And he's been telling a lot of people that possibly they're going to be working together. Uh, but he definitely has a... You know, he changed his whole mindset about Issa and seeing how she's doing real well and seeing how hard she works and re he respects it. He really wants to work with her. So he's like, listen, I would love to work with you. Definitely think about it. Come by the shop if you can. I want to show you some things. So, you know, the assistant and Issa, they go by Crenshaw's shop. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you showed up. Let me show you what's going on. We're doing some new things. Right. So definitely Crenshaw is trying to move on up, definitely make some moves and you know, he tells everybody, go ahead and welcome Issa D, right? So everybody claps for her. And here comes Snack Man. That's why I call him Snack Man. <laughs> and he has some brownies. He's like, hey, this is an olive brownie, right? Gives her the brownies. She's like, oh, this is good. He's like, yeah, I just popped it out of the air fryer. It's all good. You know, so it's looking pretty good. And now they're on the block and Issa's talking with Crenshaw and her assistant. And she's like, yeah, you know, I've been working on some things. And, you know, you have your shop up and running. And I want to open up, think about opening up a new shop, like a new place. So she shows this like really nice, big, you know, place, empty place. And he's like, hey, can we really afford that with everything going on? And she's like, well, we ran the numbers and it looks like everything's looking good, you know. So, you know, she's running all of this through her mind as to what can possibly happen with the potential of her collaborating with Crenshaw. So this showing how, you know, they definitely went with it and a new Crenshaw shop opened up. You know, they got lines around the block, you know, lines are around the block waiting to get inside. And everybody's saying what's up to Issa, you know, because they see that she's making things happen with Crenshaw. And it's looking real good for her. Right. Again, this is her seeing and visualizing what it could be if she collaborates with Crenshaw. And then she sees your boy Todd Dallas sign on a on a bus for NBW. Right. This water is popping. Right. So now. We're at the city of Inglewood. We're there. And who do we see? We see your girl, Tyra Banks. <laughs> and she is now up there talking about Issa D and how she's done great things for the community and helped out a lot of things, the community center and everything. And she is now going to present new Issa Wood Day and present Issa with the key to the city. Right. It's like, wow, all of this going on, Tyra Banks giving you the key to the city. She's saying thank you to everybody. She got that, you know, new wig on, all right? That's what's up. <laughs> and she gets the key to the city and everybody's cheering for her, right? All right, now we shoot back home. The key is on the wall, right? She's doing real well, right? Guess who greets her at the door? Of course, Nathan greets her at the door. He's like, I'm so proud of you. Things are going well for Nathan, for Issa, and, and everything's going well. But she's looking around and she's like, uh, what's going on here? Right? She's like, why do we move here? Like, what's going on? He's like, oh, you know, we we on that entrepreneur, business entrepreneur tip. You know, we had to cut back on a couple of things, but uh, we definitely doing well, you know? And she's like, oh, okay. Like, she's kind of disappointed, uh, you know, with this whole <laughs> dream thing going on. She's like, she was expecting to be in another house, you know, working with Crenshaw and things blowing up. Right. So she goes in the bathroom and he's like, yeah, you know, 
I'm proud of you. And she's like, what? She didn't hear what he said. And comes behind her. Who comes behind her? And she's surprised. She hears Lawrence's voice. And guess who shows up? Lawrence shows up <laughs> with the same shirt, same chain, just like Nate had. And he's like, yeah, you know, I just wanted to say I'm sorry that I, I surprised you, but I wanted to let you know I'm proud of you. And Issa's like, what, what is going on? What, <laughs> what, what's going on here? Like, wh why is Lawrence here? And he rolls up on, he's like, hey, you know, I just wanted to, you know, say I'm proud of you for, you know, making some choices and, you know, that you're happy now. And he rolls up on her and he's like, yeah, you know, I, I see that you're happy. I just want to congratulate you. And he leans in to give her a kiss. And she's like, what? what and he keeps leaning in and she's like no 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 she's like <laughs> trying to back him off and then she starts screaming he starts ah she starts screaming like what is going on right <laughs> like he's leaning all the way in about to get the kiss uh, she's leaning to the side just trying to avoid him and then boom she wakes up from this dream <laughs> i'll tell you her dreams are kind of crazy right her daydreams are kind of wild. She gets in the car. It's like, am I bugging out? What is Lawrence doing in my dream, right? All right. So now we're back at Molly's parents' house, and they're done. They finally finish, you know, the will and the, the estate plan and everything else like that. You know, Kels is like, hey, mom, don't forget to invite me for Denzel Washington night. You know, no fences is going to hold us back. <laughs> Call me back from Denzel. She's making a joke, of course, and then she leaves. You know, Molly's like, listen, Dad, we finally got it done. Are you okay? I know it was kind of hard. He's like, yeah, it was kind of hard, but I'm glad you, you know, pushed us to do it. You know, even though he still kind of feels like he doesn't really have anything to leave her, but she makes him feel better. And she feels better as well, you know, because, you know, they, she does wasn't, she just doesn't want anything bad to happen to them. And if something does happen to them, they're going to be okay. They're going to be straight, you know, so. She's really tired and exhausted. It's emotionally draining as to what she had to do with her brothers and her parents. So she kind of breaks down and she cries. You know, she cries about everything because she still kind of feels bad that, you know, they did it. But she gets a call from Torian, right? Torian calls her up because they're supposed to be going out on their second date. So he's like, yeah, it's a, you know, bring your own, bring your BYOD, bring your own drink. And he's talking about drinks and she's like, hey, listen, you know, I had a really long day with my parents and you know I, he's like you on a flake on me she's like yeah i don't want to but you know it's just been really draining emotionally draining for me and you know instead of touring getting mad he's like hey listen i understand i understand i'm sorry you had a bad day you know definitely if you want to talk about it let me know so Tony's is being a good dude and he's like hey just just let me know what's going on i'm here for you so now <laughs> We got Issa, and she is now having a conversation with herself in the mirror again. And she's like, what's wrong? She's like, yeah, wasn't everything good? Wasn't everything good? She's like, no, what was what was Lawrence doing in my dream? She's like, well, you know, maybe uh, things haven't ended between you and him. Maybe there's something else. Maybe there's a little voice in your head saying that things haven't ended. She's like, yeah, you're the little voice. And then she walks away. She's like, you're leaving? <laughs> so and we got Molly. She's back home. You know, she's still kind of feeling kind of low or whatever so Issa gives her a call she's like hey how's everything going did everything work out molly's like yeah everything worked out you know but you know it, it was hard to do but things got done so she's like did you make a decision you know are you a big mogul now you know what are you gonna do and Issa's kind of going back and forth like yeah i don't know what to do if it's right or wrong and molly's like listen just make a decision either way you're gonna be okay either way you're gonna be okay molly gets a knock at the door and some, she has a delivery. She has like, it looks like there's a bottle sent. And she's like, I didn't order anything, right? I, you know, my name is Molly, but I didn't order anything. So she gets the bottle and then she gets the bag and she's walking in. Then she gets a text from Torian and he's just like, hey, wings and wine makes everything fine, right? So, you know, he's being a good dude. You know, he's really like just trying to look out for her, make her feel better and not be on some just like, hey, I just want to, you know, get with you, but he's her friend as well. Your boy, Nathan, he goes to the pho spot and he brings some pho, right? And she's excited about it. And she's like, yeah, we're going to eat and everything. And she's like, oh, I'm so happy. And she hears a voice. She hears Lauren's voice again talking about, that's all I want. I want you, and want you to be happy. So she's like, what is going on? She hears a voice coming from the other room. So she looks 
And she looks and she's waiting again because, you know, last time in her imagination, she saw Lawrence come through. But Nate walks back through the door. Right. And he's ready to eat. And if you look at it, she really looked like she was kind of down about him walking through the door. Like it wasn't Lawrence. You know, I mean, again, you guys let me know. Did she like was she like disappointed that it wasn't Lawrence walking through the door? You know, so they they're about to eat, but she keeps looking back and she's like, man. So, yes, that is the recap of episode eight choices. OK, you guys let me know. What are your thoughts on this? Are things completely done with Lawrence and Issa? You know, is she's made. Is she does she feel like she's making the right choice with being with Nate? You know, are there still some unresolved issues going on between her and Lawrence? And is she going to go with Crenshaw or stick with NBW? You guys let me know what you think about this episode. What do you think about this recap? You know, was there anything that I missed? And again, you know, definitely we're coming down to the last couple of episodes. Definitely enjoying, you know, Insecure. This is the last season. So again, let's make this big. Let's make it count. Let's keep this thing going. I appreciate your love and support. And you know who it is. It's your man, Vay KJ. I'm out. Until next time, salute.